In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up a bunch of links that have to be clicked before a continue button appears. Okay, I was over on the Adobe community page there and saw that Patrick wrote a question about getting a bunch of hyperlinks to work that once they've all been visited, the continue button for that slide would appear. In other words, it would be hidden up until that point. Let me show you how you do that. Okay, so I'm assuming this is something similar to what Patrick had in mind. I've got five hyperlinks, as Patrick is inquiring about, and then I have a continue button at the bottom of my page here. If we go to our properties inspector, we can first of all make sure that that next button is actually not visible in output, and we can start to build the variables and advanced actions we need for such an interaction like this. So let's start off with our variables. So we'll go into variables. We're gonna keep track of all five of these hyperlinks and whether they've been followed by our learners. So we're gonna need one variable for each one of those. So I'm gonna click on add new and I'm just gonna keep it simple and call them underscore Adobe, underscore Amazon, underscore Microsoft, underscore Apple, and underscore Google. Okay, so we have all our variables we need for this interaction. We can go ahead and we can close the variables window and we need to write an advanced action for each one of these links. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on project in advanced actions. I'm just gonna move this to the side so I can keep track of which ones I'm creating. We'll start off with Adobe here. I'm gonna call this Adobe link. And this is gonna require two tabs. One that's gonna take care of the actions that happen when we click on the hyperlink, and another tab that will check to see if we've completed following all five hyperlinks. So this first tab, I'm just gonna call it press. And we're gonna do um, two things. We're going to assign Adobe with a literal value of one, because we're just keeping track that that has been pressed. And then we're going to open the URL for Adobe, which is HTTPS colon slash slash Adobe dot com. We'll make sure that we're selecting a new window for that to appear. And that takes care of everything that needs to happen when we press Adobe. Now, every time we press one of these, I wanna to check to see if we're complete. So I'm gonna do another tab that I'm gonna call check. Now, this is a conditional advanced action because we're checking to see if this condition has been met. So we'll select the conditional tab and we'll say if our variable Adobe is equal to the literal value of one and Amazon is equal to the literal value of one. Microsoft is equal to the literal value of one. Apple is equal to the literal value of one. Now I've run out of lines here, so I'm gonna have to press the add uh, line action from the toolbar there and we will select Google is equal to the literal value of one. So what happens when all five of these items are equal to one? We're going to show the continue button. So I'm going to select the show action here and it's called next button as far as the object name is concerned, but that's fine. So I can save this as an action. Now you might be thinking to yourself, that's a lot of steps to create a total of five advanced actions. If you're gonna be using hyperlinks, unfortunately, you're going to need um, regular advanced actions because you can't run shared actions from hyperlinks. 
but it's easy to duplicate this advanced action and just make a few modifications. So I'm going to click on the duplicate action icon in the uh, up, up in the upper right hand corner here. And we'll call this one Amazon link. And we only need to change two things. Everything on the, the check tab remains the same. Here we just simply update the variable that we're saving to. And we're going to change the hyperlink that we're visiting. And that's it. So we can update that action. So now we have two advanced actions. Duplicate it once more. And this one we'll call Microsoft link. And we'll work with the Microsoft variable and take our learners to Microsoft.com. Update that action. Click OK. Duplicate it once more. And now we're working with Apple. So we'll update the Apple variable. And we will take our learners to Apple.com. One final one to do here. You can see it's not too bad when you're duplicating previously written advanced actions. This one will be called Google link. We are updating the variable associated with Google and taking our learners to google.com. Okay, we update that action. Click OK and click close. So now what we want to do is select each of the text items that we want to turn into hyperlinks. So we click on the hyperlink icon in the properties inspector. And we're going to, first of all, select from this drop down list, ex execute advanced actions. And we'll choose the appropriate advanced action that we've written. In this case, Adobe link. And we're just going to make this the current window and click OK. And we can do the same thing for Amazon. So execute advanced actions, Amazon link, current window, and click OK. Microsoft, choose the hyperlink. Microsoft, click OK. Apple. And last but not least, the Google link. Make sure all of these are in the current window. I'm not sure if this matters, but logically it makes sense to make sure that they are all in the current window there. So even though we're opening these links in a new tab, a new window, that's taken care of with the advanced action. So I think we're good to preview this and see how it works. Let's click on preview and select HTML5 in browser. And here we are. So there's our hyperlinks. Let's follow those and return back to this page. So you can see that no matter how many times I click any one of these, it won't show the continue button until I visited all five. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.